Okay, uh, we're working on section 2.2. It's on page 70 in your textbook. Uh, we're dealing with uh, length of a line segment. It's not a long lesson today. It's not a hard lesson today. <clears throat> At the end of it, you're going to get a formula. Again, similar to the midpoint formula. Uh, a little different this time. We're looking just to calculate the length between two lines. I'm sorry, between two points. So... If I have any two points, I'm going to just draw a couple two points anywhere. I'm going to draw a line between them. Okay, and I want to get the length of any of these lines. Okay, as long as these points are on a Cartesian grid, some sort of uh, measuring grid where the squares are accurate, okay, like a map, all right? We can figure out the length of these lines, no problem, if we know the points. Anybody have any idea how? Julian? Uh, set them equal to each other. Set what? The points equal to each other? Yeah. What do you mean? Well, you have to first change to uh, like an mx plus b point. Uh, so you're talking about finding the slope? Yeah. Okay. Slope won't really tell us the length of the line, though. Any other ideas? Uh, Luigi. Uh, well, I think you could uh, look at it, like uh, make it a triangle, and then uh, find uh, do the a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Wow, that is very good. That is exactly what I was hoping you'd say. Okay, very very smart, <laughs> Luigi. Again, creative, smart, excellent. That's exactly what the formula is based on. Okay, exactly what he said. He said, make it a triangle, and then use the Pythagorean theorem. So as we know, I don't like a squared plus b squared equals c squared, because it's an elementary formula, probably made up by an elementary school teacher, which doesn't really tell us anything about the triangle. Okay, it doesn't even tell us it has to be a right angle triangle. This formula, however, S1 plus S2 equals H squared, tells us that there's two sides, and the third side, the equality, is the hypotenuse. Okay, so that is the formula I like to use. I'll call this S1, I'll call this S2, I'll call that my hypotenuse. S1, S2, my hypotenuse. Okay? So exactly like Luigi said, if we use the Pythagorean theorem, we can find these points, these side lengths easy enough because we're on a grid. So we can literally just count the squares, these points, until they line up. Right? We can subtract these x value from this x value to find that length, this y value from this y value to find this length, and then square them and add them, take the square root, and we'll have the length of the line. Does that make sense? Okay, excellent, uh, excellent Luigi. So, having said all that, our Pythagorean theorem looks like this. The formula for our line, I'm going to call this AB, AB, and AB. Those are just any two points with the given coordinates. The formula for our any line, any general line, then, is the square root <coughs> is this, okay? And it comes directly from this formula, okay? So to find out side length 1, say side length 1 over here because it's on the x-coordinates. So side length 1, you're just going to subtract this x-value of this point minus this x-value. So that'll give us this length. That's where this comes in. Plus the square of this y-value minus this y-value here. That gives us the length of the vertical. Square them. Take the square root and that's your length of the hypotenuse. Yeah? When you get uh, the square root, can you just simplify it or do you have to calculate it? Uh, when you get the, the square root of the value of the length, 
it would take the square root. Yeah, if you can simplify it and keep it in whole numbers, that's fine as well. As long as you break it down as we showed you earlier to the simplest square root form. Any questions on this formula, how it was developed, Sebastian? Couldn't you just count if it's on grid paper? <coughs> Uh, no, you can count left, uh, left and right and up and down, but how do you count diagonally? No, I mean for instead of doing the square root x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1, you can just count. Uh, you could, you're right, but then that, that makes the assumption that you already have a grid laid up and not just the actual points, right? So not every question is going to come with a grid they're just going to give you these two points, right? They're going to give you point A and point B, and you want to have a formula to sub in those points directly and find out the length. Do you understand that? Yeah. So not every question will have a grid and, and show you these points, and then you, you count between them. This is much simpler, right? Because this is giving you the exact uh, coordinates of those points, okay? You're right, though. You could just count. If you're on a grid, you could count to find out what this value is. Yeah. But this is easier, I think. And it's more, it's more exact as well. It doesn't make you kind of estimate where the actual line is ending. Any other questions with the development of that formula? That's kind of, kind of the lesson. It's pretty simple. So now we're just using that formula now into different examples. All right, uh, somebody want to read example one on page 74? We'd like to read. Uh, Connor, can you read nice and well? Make round parts. Programming machine tools often use the coordinates of the origin at the center of the part. How far apart are the centers of mountain holes A and B in this camp? The coordinates are in centimeters. Round your answer to nearest camp. Okay, so this would be a scenario, as Sebastian suggested, where probably just want to count those kind of x and, and y values. But I prefer actually using the points, because you'll see it's much easier once we have the points and in the formula. So Sebastian, what is the point A on that coordinate system? Negative 3, 5. Excellent. Negative 3, 5. And point B? 2, negative 4. 2, negative 4. All right, so we have our two points. We want to know the distance between them. We use our distance formula here. So our distance formula, again, is the length of AB, which is equal to square root. Let me ask you guys this question. Does it matter if I do x2 minus x1 or x1 minus x2? Does it matter the order? Who said yes? Alan thinks yes. Luca? Yes? Okay, that's you're right. You would get negative numbers. What do you think, Ace? I think it doesn't matter because you mean the square in the end, that's right. That's exactly right. Yeah, it doesn't matter because you're going to square it. So even if it's negative, you're going to get the same value, right? So again, formulas like this, even the formula for slope, when we really think about it, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, does it matter? It doesn't matter. No, because they cancel because they're divided by each other, right? So the signs would change, but then they, they cancel each other. Does anybody know why then we... we Say x, why do we use y2 minus y1 and x2 minus x1? Anyone know why that, that's the case? Yeah? Just people don't like to see the negative sign. Okay, that could be one reason. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good idea. Well, the reason is just, I think, for mainly just to be consistent. Right? We want to be consistent. We don't want to be confusing anything. So the teachers are going to all come together and agree which one they're going to teach because you want it, that's the main whole thing is just to be consistent. So that you guys all get burned into your brain, x2 minus x1, y2 minus x1. If, if teachers are teaching the different thing, then it can get confusing for kids. <coughs> From one grade, all of a sudden it's y2 minus y1, then it's one, y1 minus y2. 
So it's just a kind of a pattern of consistency. All right, so again, it doesn't matter, but we're going to stick with uh, using the second point first. So x2 minus x1, and again, it might be to that point. You don't have to deal with negatives as often. Let's see, so x2 minus x1. So we have 2 minus minus 3. Square root of 106, can we break that down? Anybody know uh, a nice, even, perfect square that goes into 106? Does 4 go into it? No, 2 doesn't. Go, 2 goes in, but it's not a perfect square. Uh, next one from 4 would be 9. Nope, 9 doesn't work. So maybe that's it. Yeah. Square root of 106. All right, which is approximately 10.3 if we wanted to convert, but I would have left it just as a square root of 106, yeah. What do you mean by a perfect square? A perfect square uh, is a number that when you take the square root of it, is still a whole number. Okay, so for instance, four, take the square root of four, two, so it's a perfect square. Okay, take the square root of 16, it's four, so it's a perfect square. 49 is a perfect square. Oh, well, so that's how you do that? Yes. Exactly, and I mentioned that when I was over there too, yeah, exactly. So a perfect square is a number when rooted is also a whole number, okay? So, um, you know, any number that's squared, perfect square is a number that's a whole number when it's rooted. All right, any questions here? So the length of our line AB then, in this case, is root 106 or 10.3. No questions there? We'll go to example two. Uh, volunteer to read. Nicholas. An air ambulance service. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, an air ambulance service uses a grid system to help estimate flying times and fuel requirements. Coordinates on this grid are distances in kilometers east and north of a reference point on the lower left corner of a map of northern Ontario. A helicopter ambulance picks up a patient at point P96, 197. The nearest hospitals that can provide the treatment the patient needs are in the tit are in Timmins at T. 200 comma 296 and Sudbury at S 232 comma 80. To which hospital should the helicopter take the patient? Okay, so we have three coordinates there this time. We have the patient P, which is 96 197, and then we have the Timmins coordinate hospital, and then the Sudbury hospital coordinates S. Who knows how to do this? What, what, what can you think of what to do? Without looking at the solution below there. Yeah? You find the distance from uh, the patient to the first hospital. And yeah. From the second hospital. And then whichever one's lower is the one he goes to. Excellent. Good. Perfect. And why do you guys think we can use the distance formula for this particular problem? Whereas it might not make sense uh, for another problem. Yeah? Okay, good, they give you three points. But something specifically about how we're getting to the hospital. Straight line. Yeah? By flying. Yeah, because we're in a helicopter. Okay, that's why it really makes sense that we can use an exact straight line. Because in, if we were driving, there could be one that's closer by straight line, right? But the roads might be different, right? So that's, that's why this question makes sense. We can do strictly check a straight line because we're in a helicopter, we're flying over everything. Okay, does that make sense? 
want you guys to be kind of aware of the problem too, and if you know makes sense or not. It does in this case. So again, we're going to check the distance between P and T and the distance between P and S. To see which one's shorter, that's the hospital we'll go to. So PT is going to be So very quickly using the formula, again, so back to Sebastian's initial question, why can't we just count these distances, uh, wouldn't have been as easy, right, because we don't have a grid in this case, right? You want to use this formula and have these points, okay? So again, we get the distance from the patient to the Timmins Hospital at 144, and the units are, I hope it's not kilometers, it's pretty far. Does it tell you? No, it doesn't tell you. All right, so the distance is 144 units. And the distance from the patient to the Sudbury Hospital is 179. So obviously we're going to fly to Timmins. Anybody been to Timmins before? Yes. Yeah, who? Yes. Yeah? What were you doing there? Watching a hockey game? Oh, family in Timmins. Okay, nice. It's pretty far, right? Yeah, it's about 10 hours or so, I think. Yeah. Okay. So, remember, because this is a word problem, you want to conclude with a sentence the helicopter should go to the Timmins Hospital because it is closer. Uh, list any assumptions you made for your answer. Uh, so, again, we made the assumption that the helicopter is flying over all the buildings, so it can fly in a straight line. Uh, the decision also assumes the weather will not affect the flying times and prevent the landing at the closer hospital. Fair enough. Right, last example three. Okay, example three says find the length of the median from P for a triangle with vertices P, Q, and R. So it's giving us a triangle. I'll draw this very roughly, P, Q, and R. And it asks us to find the median from P. So we know P goes from there to the midpoint there. So the length of the median. So how would we do this? How would I find the length of this line? So I have this point, this point, and this point, but I want to find the length of this line. A bit of a combo here, Tiago. So M is in the middle of Q and R, so you have to find the midpoint of Q and R to find M. Good. So you find the midpoint between Q and R, so we use our midpoint formula. Once we have M, we have P and M, we can use our length formula. Matthew? Yeah. Okay, so we have a triangle, we're given three points, 
We need to find n by using the midpoint formula. And then once we have n, we can use the length formula to find out uh, the length of that medium. All right, so first we'll do the midpoint. Midpoint. Now we're going to sub that midpoint in here. And we have our coordinate for P already, negative 2, negative 2. And now we're going to use the length formula with these two points. So the length of the median from vertex P is root 56. Any questions there? Okay, you guys can start your homework for your daily plan.